Let's make some smoky letters in PowerPoint. I actually discovered this trick by accident when I was experimenting with the morph transition and thought it was super weird and cool, so I had to share it with you. So in this video, we'll cover how to make these smoky letters in several different ways. When you have the same number of letters, when you don't, when you want to morph a word into a picture, and finally, make the letters come out as smoke from something else. And yes, for this, you will need access to the morph transition found in the latest versions of PowerPoint. So if you have an older version, I would recommend upgrading if at all possible, as it's truly a game changer for animation. You can also get a free trial of the latest PowerPoint at the link below. The main principle behind the smoky letters is that if you have the same number of vector shapes on slide one as on slide two, they will morph from one to another with a smoky effect when you add the morph transition between them. And vector shapes, by the way, are objects that you can recolor and resize as you like without losing quality, and you can also edit their points. Regular text in a text box is not considered a vector because you have to format it in the fonts menu. So it's treated differently than an object. So to use text as part of this smoky technique, we first have to vectorize it. To do that, we put our text box in by inserting it, then put some sample text in there, insert a rectangle, and then make sure it's behind the text box. Then select both and then go to the Merge Shapes menu and then choose Fragment to break it all up into vector objects. Then clean it up by deleting everything that you don't need. We can now work with these letters for the smoky effect. So let's dive into our first trick here. So in this case, all you do is put the first set of letters on one slide, then put the second set in roughly the same position on the second slide, and then make sure there's a morph transition on the second slide. Then test it out. And there you go, pretty easy. And that's how I got the power, point, and spice sequence in the intro video. Great technique to practice on, and it gets a little bit harder from here. Our next technique is a little bit more challenging because the words you want to morph don't have the same number of letters. So in this case, we have to cheat a little bit and actually connect two letters in the longer word so that we are still left with the same number of shapes on both slides. For example, I was able to morph spice, which has five letters, into presents, which has eight, by connecting three pairs of letters together like this, using the same merge shapes tool, but just choosing union this time. Of course, it's helpful to have sort of a cursive font that makes the connections more natural. And the one I'm using here is called Black Chancery, so I'll put the link to that in the description as it is a custom font. So once you have the letters connected in the right way, where the number of vector objects on the first slide equals the number of vector objects on the second slide, you should be able to do this effect. Let's test it out. Great. Good, now we've come to the third and probably the hardest way to do this, though it's probably the coolest actually. Morphing words into objects or vice versa. There are two things you need to make this happen. First, the word needs to be all connected, like the one here. You can't have any gaps between the letters. Second, and this is very important and a bit bizarre, both the word and the vector image cannot have more than one closed area, and ideally none. This means that for the word presents, in the way that it originally comes out with the font, there are two closed areas. 
E and the other E. And I think these are actually called counters in design terms, by the way. So if I try to morph the word presents as is into the lamp, this is what happens. Still looks okay, but you lose that kind of cool smoky effect. So what we need to do is to open up what I call breathing holes in here in the word presents. That is, you need to use very small skinny rectangles to open up little areas in the letter by again using our fragment tool and then cleaning it up. And after I do this on the two E's, this is what happens. You get that smoky look back again. So weird, right? The other side of this, the image part, can get tricky as well. From my experience, it needs to be one vectorized layer, so one color in total. So perfect for icons, for example. What I did actually is I turned a regular image I had, this lamp here, into a vector file by first changing the colors to be black and white by going to Format, Colors, and then choosing this black and white option. Then I saved this image on my computer, and in, in this case it's not a vector right now, so to turn it into a vector, I went to a free online vectorizer site called autotracer.org. And I'll also link to that in the description. And then I just insert my picture here, then choose EPS as an output, and then make sure you go through the process here. And now you have an EPS file of your original image. We insert that EPS file back into PowerPoint and then we ungroup it by saying Control, Shift, and G or right clicking and saying ungroup. And looks like it comes in multiple layers. And I decided to just keep this large piece here. I could, I could have added the other parts with the union feature we talked about earlier, but I decided not to just to make it easier. And now we have to make sure that this part, this lamp here, doesn't have multiple closed areas, which it doesn't because they all have little holes here. So it looks like now we're good on both the text and the picture side of things. They're all single objects with no closed areas. So after we put the morph transition on the second slide, we can make it look like this. Super, super cool. Great, so now we've come to the last technique here, which is the smoky letters coming out of something else, in this case, the magic lamp. This uses a similar concept as what we've done earlier, except you can argue it's a bit easier, actually. The first step is to put your vectorized letters where you want them to be on the second slide. And then for the first slide, as we know, you have to put the same number of vectors as we had on the second slide, in this case, five. I also don't care what these vectors are since the letters are just coming up from nothing. So it's not like something is morphing into something else. But these the, the vectors on the first slide do have to be in a different shape so that you get that smoky effect. So I personally like to use some rectangles that I vectorized with the fragment tool. So same process as before, add a couple of rectangles, then vectorize by using the fragment feature under merge shapes, and then clean, clean this all up. And although it looks like the same exact rectangle that you would just draw in, PowerPoint actually does read it differently. It reads it as a vector image that you've created. So you do have to do this step instead of just drawing it in. Now, since I have five letters on the second slide, let's make five of these rectangles. So I, hit, so I select this, and then I hit Control plus D four times to duplicate. 
And this is what I call the smoke seeds because the letters on the next slide will kind of grow out of them. So now we put these seeds into the place where, where we want the smoky letters to come from, the tip of the magic lamp. Make these as small as possible. I like to kind of zoom in and then use the, the, the size menu to, to make them really small. You can also make them the same color as the surroundings. I personally like to do that because I like to see the, the seeds when I zoom in. They're not gonna be visible at, at this size when they're zoomed out. But if you wanna make them completely invisible, you can do that as well by selecting all of them and then saying shape fill and then no fill. So now the seeds are invisible, but they're still in place, which we can test by going to the next page and then making sure that we have the morph here and then hit preview and we see that smokiness coming out of the lamp. Perfect. So that is pretty much it. Go out and play around as I'm sure there are more secrets to this that I haven't discovered yet. But I did wanna make sure I brought you this trick as soon as I found it. So hope you enjoyed. Please comment, like, and subscribe for more videos and see you for my next one.